coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Falco Evo surveillance drone touches down in the Middle East. DJI seeking partners for UAS integration pilot program. And where are the most drones? Las Vegas, according to research. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. Leonardo has announced the completion of the first delivery of its Falco Evo remotely piloted air system to its launch customer in the Middle East. The Falco Evo, the longest endurance model from Leonardo's Falco RPA's family, is a surveillance and intelligence gathering platform that can fly for more than 20 hours, while carrying a payload of up to 220 pounds. More than 50 Falco family RPAs are currently in operation around the world, with some customers choosing to operate them independently, while others such as the United Nations for its humanitarian Monosco mission opt for Leonardo to own and operate the Falco aircraft and provide surveillance data as a managed service. Leonardo is reportedly the only company in Europe able to offer a complete end-to-end -end RPA system, including its sensors. This capability spans from initial design to operation, including sensors, mission management system, and ground control station. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. The UK Ministry of Transport is recommending new laws to go into effect next year that would restrict drone flight near airports following reports of more than 50 near misses between UAVs and airliners in the past year. Parliamentary Undersecretary for the Department of Transport, Baroness Elizabeth Sugg, said the number of such incidents makes the need to act clear. The legislation, which is backed by BALPA, would also give police broader authority to land drones thought to be involved in criminal activity. NOAA's Atmospheric Turbulence and Diffusion Division of the Air Resources Laboratory has selected Boulder, Colorado-based Black Swift Technologies to integrate their Swift Core flight management system with a UAV factory Pigeon BE UAV platform in support of a joint research project with the University of Tennessee Space Institute. This represents the first integration of BST's Swift Core flight management system with a Pigeon BE UAV platform. In situ has entered into a contract with Shell Energy subsidiary QGC to leverage remotely piloted aircraft systems that will deliver automated infrastructure inspection and management service for its operations within Queensland. In a first-of-its-kind program in Australia, the contract in the Surat Basin represents a significant move towards the use of autonomous air vehicles in advanced analytics in the area of broad anchor infrastructure operations and maintenance. Following a request for international assistance to locate the Argentine Navy's missing submarine, the ARA San Juan and its crew, the U.S. Navy has deployed one Bluefin 12D UUV and three Ivor 580 UUVs to assist in the search. The UUVs are operated by the Navy's Unmanned Undersea Vehicle Squadron 1, which was established back in September and is based in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. DJI is looking to partner with state, local, and tribal governments that are applying to take part in the FAA's recently launched UAS Integration Pilot Program which will provide opportunities for government and industry to experiment with advanced UAS operations and test new forms of airspace management. Governments that are interested in participating in the UAS Integration Pilot Program have been asked by the FAA to work with UAS operators and manufacturers in their applications to be a part of the pilot program. With this in mind, DJI is inviting those governments to consider partnering with DJI so that the expertise and collaborative vitality of their programs can be enhanced. 
DJI has worked for years with government officials around the world to help develop reasonable safety-enhancing public policies while keeping open the pathways to innovation, says Brendan Schulman, DJI Vice President of Policy and Legal Affairs. Through a partnership, DJI says that it will offer significant equipment and expertise, including but not limited to its UAS equipment, its new Aeroscope electronic license plate technology, and access to DJI's user community. DJI says that it welcomes other ideas for how it can contribute to ambitious integration pilot program proposals. If you're looking for a thriving drone community, look no further than Las Vegas. According to research conducted by Bard College in New York, the 89117 zip code has the largest number of hobbyist drone registration at 672. The researchers analyzed data from the FAA's registration database. The residential area west of the Strip had about 200 more registered hobby drones than the next highest zip code, a suburb of Houston, Texas. The FAA has records of 836,796 hobbyist drone users and 106,739 commercial users. Well, that's our program for this week. AUVSI's Airborne Unmanned is presented weekly in cooperation with the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. And in addition to this program are Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe, and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. See you next week.